Hi folks, today I'd like to talk about the most common mistakes people are making while fishing for walleye and what I'm specifically though winter river walleye fishing. Uh, if you've noticed my last three or four videos have been targeting walleye and sauger. The reason is I'm trying to get one put on my wall. I'd like to get a at least a seven pounder but preferably a double digit sized one. Uh, I grew up catching them accidentally, you know, three or four a year while fishing for other species, but have recently got into it a lot more in the last year because I've witnessed some giants uh, that other people have had and just uh, constantly learning this thing. And uh, the reason I've decided to give you guys the biggest mistakes people are making is because I've had to learn them myself most of them within just the past few weeks just from talking to a few old timers in my area that have done it for 30 or 40 years and they showed me what I was doing wrong and why I'm only getting the ones that are 18 inches and below if you noticed uh, I always catch one every trip uh, but they're always the eight, 16 to 18 inch ones uh, maybe a few 19 I have got a 24 before I started making videos um, uh, the first and most common mistake is you are getting there too early and leaving too early. What I mean by that is uh, they are a nocturnal feeder, low light feeder, I should say. And I do it too. And the thing is, I, I, I'll i go in the, you know, eight or nine in the morning and I'll stay right till dark or a half hour, an hour before dark. And then I leave. Um, as I was leaving last weekend, a guy told me, he goes, man, your problem is you're leaving right when it's getting ready to start. He said that he goes, you know, till four in the afternoon and stays till 11 or midnight at least, uh, when pursuing them. Um, you know, and, and it's hard for me, especially when it's cold to, to really tough it out and stay out there when it's completely dark. Uh, but if you want to get those big trophy wallies, that's what you need to do is fish uh, you need to get there at like four in the morning and fish till eight or get there at three in the afternoon since it gets dark at five or whatever and stay till 10 at night if you really want to get that trophy one. Not saying that you won't catch them in the day because I have been catching them in the day, but if you, if you notice, I always just get one. They're going to feed during the day at certain times, but yeah, the best ones are going to be when it's completely dark. Uh, the other mistake I've been making is nine months out of the year typically or at least eight around here keep in mind i live in southeast missouri so it's going to vary according to where you live and and let me remind you this is specifically winter river walleye colors i've always for my whole life every time i fish for walleye and sauger i always want to use them bright stuff yellow orange chartreuse hot pink bright green uh, the guy that I talked to that was telling me what I was doing wrong, he said, yeah, those are fine. Those colors are fine starting in spring and through the late fall. Because well, at least where I live is what he's talking about. Because the, that's because the river there is typically dingier during those months. But starting usually in about October, sometimes late September, but October through the end of March, the river is crystal clear because of drier periods, a lot less rain. He said during those times, you want to use only brown or black, natural colors. So that's another thing I've been doing wrong. So I'm trying to fix that by purchasing different equipment. Uh, so you want to go with a more natural color since that water is so clear that it's it's unnecessary for you to use bright orange and chartreuse and those other bright colors. Uh, the th another mistake people are making is you're not using heavy enough jig heads. I had purchased about two months ago. I purchased a uh, 51 half ounce jig head. There are half ounce jig heads. Uh, as I was leaving, the guy that was there at the boat ramp, he had a a big walleye on his boat he said you're using the wrong size jig heads and i said what do you mean he goes those ain't near heavy enough you need at least one ounce 
and he explained it to me and it really made a lot of sense when you're using a one ounce jig head it's getting to the bottom quicker but you got to realize this it gives you way more control if I'm using a quarter ounce jig head only which is usually the biggest they sell at, at stores uh, and I'm setting their vertical jigging it's going to the bottom sure but you can't feel it you can't feel that thump it hitting the bottom over and over and when you're jerking up like this you're probably jerking that jig head up several feet instead of one foot off the bottom where you're needing it to be in that line of sight for them walleye to see it also if you're doing a different type of vertical jigging where you're trolling and just slowly or even going with the current instead of being anchored your your jig head is not going to stay on the bottom what it's going to end up doing is jerking up diagonal or if you're casting same thing you probably with a quarter ounce even a half ounce it's eventually going to get down to the bottom but you're not going to feel that you're not going to have that same control and when you slowly twitch it and pull it your jig head is going to come way off the bottom three or four feet even more than that so you want to have that one ounce jig head because it gives you more control and you feel what you're doing more and it keeps it on the bottom okay the other problem here's another thing skip the mediocre holes during the winter walleye will winter have these wintering holes that they need to be at least 20 feet but even more specifically they need to be 90 degree bends where creeks come in or where drop-offs are that is really the only three places they will be besides blow a dam and that's usually in February but there there are probably other holes along the way that you're gonna see and you want to stop and fish them don't even waste your time I'm gonna give you an example when I fished the the lower black when I float from Poplar Bluff down to Highway 53 there's only five holes I stop at I skip over all the rest because they're not worth stopping at they may have one or two in there but you want to go to those big round holes that drop off at a 90 degree bend or where a creek comes in so skip the the holes that ain't worth fishing you need to key out on the few holes and there may only be four or five of them in a five mile stretch of river uh, you know, look at study your satellite photos to figure out exactly where them holes are. Wherever you catch one, they're always going to be there every year after year. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. Um, it, it, them tips should help you catch more walleye. Um, don't use lures that ain't hitting the bottom. Crankbaits are a good late spring, summer, and even early autumn baits uh, but anything else you you want to focus on getting on the bottom uh, if you're going to use live bait use leeches or you want to catch your own minnows because they are not really that interested in store-bought minnows because you need to use ones that are at least five inches preferably five to seven inches so you want to use minnow traps that you set out in the creek like try to catch stone rollers or big shiners uh, because the ones they sell in the store are maybe two inches three if you're lucky and they're just they're really not interested in those bigger ones at least the big fish ain't you might catch some smaller ones and you can catch some sauger using the store-bought minnow you really need to catch your own and uh, that's about it guys I really hope this is helpful I'm gonna be using these tips myself the next couple times I go out um, so hopefully uh, I'm tr I got one more month left. I'm trying to get that trophy walleye before March 1st hits because uh, I want to put one on my wallet where I get a bunch of different species. All I got on my wall right now is a hybrid striper, the 8-pounder, and I, I'm wanting to get me a walleye before it gets warm, and then I'm going to go after I want an 18-inch crappie to put on my wall. So we're going to try that starting in mid-March up through mid-April. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button and please subscribe you guys take care